Hello everyone. Let's continue with this series of how to approach and manage a case of fever in primary care in OPD. In the last video, we have discussed the symptoms and signs of fever. In this video, we will discuss the investigations to be done. Uh, we have seen that in OPD, lots of investigations are recommended to the patient, but we should be precise in writing the investigations because all the patients can't afford investigations. Preliminary investigations and diagnostic investigations. If a patient comes to my OPD uh, with a fever of uh, more than 101 degree and there is no obvious cause for the fever, fever is present for more than two or three days, then I will go for these three basic tests, CBC, a peripheral smear and urine analysis. So these are the basic three tests when I'm not able to identify the uh, system through which the patient is getting the uh, fever. While other tests uh, like rapid diagnostic test, liver function test, kidney function test, ultrasound, x-ray, they have some uh, specific uh, indications. So let's discuss these tests. First is the CBC. In the uh, complete blood count, uh, I will look for the hemoglobin. If hemoglobin is low, this is suggestive of uh, malarial infections because plasmodium falciparum can cause hemolysis. So uh, hemoglobin will be low. Hematocrit. Hematocrit is a very important parameter. It is high in dengue uh, fever uh, when there is a plasma leak. So the hematocrit uh, will be increased. Coming to the differential counts or total leukocyte count. Uh, let's see what will be the suspected disorders of fever, which can change the total leukocyte count and differential leukocyte count. So if patient has leukocytosis, leukocytosis means ki total uh, TLC is increased. Usual range of the uh, TLC is in most of the lab is 4000 to 10,000 per microliter. It is seen in cases of leptospirosis, scrub typhus, liver amoebiasis, and complicated typhoid. Remember this point, typhoid causes low TLC, but if there is some complication like any intestinal perforation, then TLC will be increased. Leukopenia, TLC count is low, less than 4000 per microliter or per mm cube. It is seen in cases of dengue, that is viral induced fever, Malaria, uh, miliary TB and typhoid fever. Lymphocytosis. It is seen in cases of uh, viral infections, non-specific viruses, upper respiratory tract infection viruses can lead to high lymphocyte count. Rickettsial infections uh, can also lead to lymphocytosis. Relative lymphocytosis. The meaning of the relative lymphocytosis is that total leukocyte count is normal but the percentage of lymphocyte has increased. It is seen in cases of brucellosis, Whipple disease and lymphomas. So whenever you see in the investigation that TLC count is low, but the DLC percentage wise lymphocytes are more, lymphocyte maximum percentage is 40%. So if it is going more than 40%, then it is a relative lymphocytosis. Relative lymphopenia, Relative lymphopenia means TLC is normal, but the lymphocyte percentage is low, less than 20%. This is seen in cases of cytomegalovirus, HIV infection, or Q fever. Atypical lymphocytes. Atypical lymphocytes will be seen in Epstein-Barr virus disease, typically. Monocytosis, seen in malarial fever. Basophilia. Basophilia is a characteristic of blood malignancies like uh, leukemia or lymphomas. Eosinophilia. Seen in cases of histoplasmosis, polyarthritis nodosa, drug-induced fever or Loeffler syndrome. These are uh, allergic reactions, Loeffler syndrome due to eosinophilia. Never seen in typhoid. So this uh, becomes a negative diagnosis whenever eosinophilia is present in the blood test. It is unlikely a typhoid fever. Reason in typhoid fever, eosinopenia is present, not eosinophilia. Coming to high platelet count, thrombocytosis. Thrombocytosis is uh, acute phase reactant. So seen in cases of chronic infections, 
सब एक्यूट बैक्टीरियल एंडोकार्डाइटिस क्यू फीवर और वास्कुलाइटिस क्रॉनिक इन्फेक्शन वन ऑफ द क्रॉनिक इन्फेक्शन इज टूबर क्लोसिस इन टूबर क्लोसिस यू मस्ट हैव सीन दैट प्लेटलेट काउंट आर वेरी हाई थ्रोम्बोसाइटोपीनिया ऑब्वियस कॉज इज डेंगी फीवर विद ब्लीडिंग एंड विद स्प्लिनोमेगैली इट कैन बी सीन इन मलेरिया पेनसाइटोपीनिया ऑल द सेल काउंट्स आर लो सीन इन केसेज ऑफ ट्यूबरक्लोसिस ब्रुसेला एंड एच आई बी बिकॉज दीज इन्फेक्शन सप्रेस बोन मैरो ई एस आर मोर देन हंड्रेड दो ई एस आर इज अ वेरी नॉन स्पेसिफिक इन्वेस्टिगेशन बट वेन इट इज वेरी हाई लाइक इट इज गोइंग मोर देन हंड्रेड देन यू सस्पेक्ट दीज डिसऑर्डर्स दीज डिसऑर्डर्स कैन बी इन्फेक्शन लाइक बैक्टीरियल एंडोकार्डाइटिस एप्सेस ऑस्टियोमलाइटिस टोबरक्लोसिस यूरिनरी ट्रैक इन्फेक्शन रोमेटिक फीवर include rheumatic disease include joint cell arthritis rheumatoid arthritis sle malignancies are usually blood related malignancies plasma cell malignancies like multiple myeloma leukemia lymphoma or carcinomas peripheral smear now i always order for the peripheral smear because peripheral smear can be diagnostic in gold standard for malaria indeed parasite density correlate with the severity and it can be done for filaria also urine analysis in the urine analysis uh, it should be performed in women and elderly patients all severely ill patients and all diabetes patient with fever uh, i have a routine that whenever a diabetes patient comes to me with fever i order urine analysis in all the cases urine routine at least i can see the pus cells so if pus cells are there that means ki urine infection is present because these group of the patient they may not give you a classical history of burning sensation of urine they will not give you the history of even fever so uh, therefore you should be very uh, proactive in diagnosing urine infection in diabetes patients uh if there is proteinuria and hematuria present in urine analysis this is suspected leptospirosis hemoglobinuria is present malaria and al always tell uh, the uh, always look for the pus cells uh, as well as the uh, uh, leukocytes it can be a pus cells written or it can be leukocyte uh, given or maybe leukocyte esterase given so if these are positive then ask the patient for urine culture now indications of liver function test liver function test should be done if patient is severely ill so in all the severe ill patients like patient is in hypotension patient is in shock patient is not able to accept orally so in those all cases go for a liver function test serum bilirubin will be elevated due to hemolysis in malaria and leptospirosis liver enzymes ast and alt if they are more than 1000 international units per liter this is the defining feature of severe dengue fever elevated bilirubin distinguish malaria from dengue so this is a important point like uh, malaria and dengue will have same uh, symptoms uh, so if uh, rash is uh, not present it goes in favor of malaria rash is present in dengue if bilirubin is high it is going in favor of malaria not dengue so this will be a distinguishing feature raised bilirubin with moderate elevation of alt like around 200 and raised cpk this is a combination of leptospirosis renal function test again patient who is severely ill i will go for a renal function test deranged kft will be seen in malaria scrub typhus and leptospirosis chest x ray so in which patient should i order the chest x ray so all the patient who are complaining of tachypnea that means respiratory rate is high all make it a habit ki uh, ask the patient for a chest x ray chest x ray is available almost everywhere and it is a relatively economical investigation so any patient of tachypnea go for the chest x ray or patient is severely ill in the chest x ray ards we will see bilateral opacities like in a, a, a bad wing distribution scrub typhus ards can be caused by malaria as well and leptospirosis
Pleural effusion uh, will be seen in dengue fever because of the plasma leakage. Uh, pleural effusion can also be seen in tuberculosis infection or rheumatic heart, uh, rheumatic diseases as well. Consolidation will be seen in bacterial pneumonia like pneumococcal pneumonia. Heterogeneous opacity will be seen in tuberculosis. So these are the common finding in the X-ray that you will be looking for. Ultrasound of the abdomen. So when should ultrasound be ordered? Ultrasound should be ordered when patient has severe abdominal pain, especially localized to the right hypochondrial area. Patient uh, complains of jaundice. Patient is in shock. Hepatomegaly is there, especially tender hepatomegaly can be liver abscess. Fever without any obvious cause. So when you are not able to diagnose the etiology of the fever, then go for this non-invasive test, ultrasound abdomen. Space occupying lesion will be seen in liver abscess. Mesenteric lymph nodes are seen in typhoid and tuberculosis. Ascites, gallbladder edema seen in dengue fever. Now coming to the diagnostic fever, with the help of uh, symptoms and signs, you will be able to make a, a differential diagnosis uh, of a particular fever. So we have to go for a diagnostic test, especially in acute undifferentiated fever. Acute undifferentiated fever for malaria, rapid diagnostic tests are available for malarial antigens. But the gold standard is the smear examination. For detailed discussion of the malaria, you can watch our video on malaria. Dengue, uh, NS1 antigen and IgM antibodies. IgM antibodies are usually positive after 4 or 5 days of the uh, symptoms. Typhoid fever, the gold standard will be blood culture. But if uh, blood culture is not available, then we can go for a IgM typhi dot. For scrub typhus, we will go for the rapid diagnostic test for IgM antibodies. Leptospirosis, again, rapid diagnostic test for IgM antibodies, they will be positive after a week. Blood culture, CSF culture uh, will be positive within 10 days. Chikungunya. RT-PCR for viral RNA, uh, it will be positive within 8 days and IgM by ELISA after 7 days. Localized infections. So localized infections, uh, upper respiratory tract infections, usually there is no need for the uh, diagnostic test unless we are suspecting any uh, COVID uh, fever or maybe H1N1 flu. So then uh, we will uh, go for those uh, tests. Uh, while for streptococcus, uh, we can go for a rapid uh, antigen test and throat culture. Uh, lower respiratory tract infection, chest X-ray, sputum, gram stain, AFB and culture should be done. Unit tract infection, it is the urine culture which will tell us the uh, antibiotic sensitivity. For intra-abdominal infections, stool culture, if symptoms are more than 3 days, if the uh, loose stools are present for more than 3 days or patient is immunocompromised. Skin and soft tissue infection, so we will take a pus and uh, send the pus for culture. For bone and joint infections, synovial fluid, gram stain and culture will be done. So these are the uh, diagnostic investigations which should be done for the particular fever. Now coming to the empirical treatment of this fever. So empirical treatment we will discuss in our next video. Related to these investigations, if you have any doubts or questions, you can put in the comment section. Thank you.